Welcome to the 11th exercise in the Libra practice parts. Let's start by sketching on the YZ plane. And I'll draw two circles to start us off. Uh, this one I'll give a diameter of 30, and this one I'll give a diameter of 22. I'll draw a line starting with the inner circle moving horizontal, a vertical line, and then another horizontal line ending with the outer circle. And I'll do the same thing mirroring. And there we are. Grab an equal relation and make sure that these two end lines are equal. And maybe these two inner lines are equal as well. I'll grab a vertical relation Make sure that these points are vertical. I'll grab a dimension and I can give this line a dimension of 4. And then I can go from my origin to this outer line and make a dimension of 6. Then I can go from my origin to this outer point. give a dimension of 38. Next, I can use my trim right here, and I can start removing elements of the sketch that I don't wish to be there. All right, now that I have this traced out and we're fully defined, I'll deactivate the sketch. And we'll do a mid-plane extrude, and I'd like to go to a distance of 40. And then after that, I want to make a plane that is based on my yx plane here. And we'll give this plane a distance of 35. And that looks right to me. So we'll begin sketching on this plane. I'd like to make a rectangle. And we'll go with the dimension horizontally of 23. And uh, let's add an equal constraint to here. So if I want this um, rectangle to be constrained where the origin is in the dead center, I of course can add dimensions of 11.5 vertically and horizontally. But maybe I want to be a little bit more sophisticated than that, so I'll choose uh, my symmetric relation, and I'll choose this axis as a point of symmetry, and I can choose these points here, and then I can choose my vertical axis as a point of symmetry, and choose these horizontal points, and now we're fully constrained to be in the middle, and if I update my dimensions, I will stay centered. Right, so I'll deactivate my sketch, I'm going to extrude and we'll select to geometry and select this outer face here. Next, how about I sketch on my ZX plane? And let's make somewhat of a similar sketch. First, I'd like to project this edge with maintained association as a reference figure. And then I'll choose a midpoint relation right here. And I'll select this point and this line, and the point is automatically snapped to the center of my line. Very useful. I'll select a dimension, and on this circle we'll go a diameter of 26. And then I'd like to add in, so we'll add a line. line and line. Uh, so we'll dimension that. How about we go from here to here as 12, and then from this line over here, vertical dimension of 38, and then I'll add a horizontal constraint from this point to that point. And then again, I can do a trim to make sure that this section is removed. 
And we lose a little bit of geometry, but not too much, right? We just have to make sure that we restore that midline constraint. So instead, I'll uh, add a vertical and go to the origin, and we are again centered. I'll deactivate my sketch, and let's go a distance of 40. Again, we'd like to do this mid-plane, and we already have our 40. Uh, so with that worked out, I can add in some chamfers. These make it quite easy to work around, right? So I want to go distance, distance this time, and I'll go 12 millimeters one way, and maybe we can visualize what it looks like. And then I want to go 12 millimeters the other way. So the same distance makes for 45 degrees. And I'll select these edges. And I can select these edges as well. We will apply that and close. I'll select this face, activate a sketch. And this time, I'll make a circle. I can use my cocentric constraint to make sure that my circle is centered in the other one. We'll go with a line. We'll add in a horizontal from point to point, and then we'll give this a dimension of 18. And then relative to this wall, we'll go a dimension of four. And then I can give this a height just to make sure that I'm above it. 35 seems fine. I can add a trim and get rid of this little center guy. We'll deactivate the sketch and I can do an extrude cut. And to be simple, I can specify through all as my design intent. After that, um, I'll need some fillets, so I'll grab my fillet tool. We'll give a dimension of 10, and I'll select not that edge, but rather this edge. And all of these around my chamfers. And we'll apply that. Uh, the next thing I want to select some five millimeter radii. So I'll add five into my radius. And then I can select an edge like these. And also these. Okay, after applying that, I'd like to add one more five millimeter fillet, and that would be this edge and this edge. And then the very last thing, let's add some holes. I can choose, um, let's go with this face. So I'll select that face, and then I'll add in my hole tool here. So in my hole tool, I want dimensions of 50 and 8, right? Height of 50, diameter of 8. I'll click on my face once, and I can add a hole. I'll add a vertical constraint from my hole center to my origin to make sure I'm centered that way. And then I can give this a height. We'll go relative to this very outer edge, assuming that that will be a critical dimension for this part. And we'll give this a dimension of 10. That should be fully constrained, so I'm going to say OK on that. Let's go to this next face and do the same thing. I'll select my hole tool, and we'll go with clicking once. We'll give this dimension relative again to the outer edge. We'll go to the same dimension of 10 millimeters, and I'll add a horizontal relation. And we'll go from my hole center to my origin. We should be fully constrained there as well. And that should be our part. So I hope this was enjoyable.
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next exercise.